I'm here in Notting Hill today and I'm about to go and meet up with Leila Bartel, a super talented and super striking filmmaker and artist. So let's go up to a studio and see what she's up to. I actually met Layla because I was stalking her on Instagram. I'd heard about you from somebody who was at a fashion show that I was at for London Fashion Week. Oh, okay. And she was like, oh, there's this awesome director who's just had a short film at the Curzon. And that was that, really. And we both live in Notting Hill, so that's useful. Perfect. What was your journey into the film industry? I've always been into visual arts. So as a kid, I acted in the theater. I suppose it was just a, a natural path for me to probably go into directing but it actually happened honestly by by chance i heard about modern day slavery through a friend of mine and i started researching the subject and i wrote a story um, it was a script that i sent to a producer friend of mine and about five minutes later she came back to me and she said i want to do it i said yeah but who's gonna direct it because i really had these thoughts in my head and she said you will, you know? <laughs> and, Makes and, sense. Yeah, and, and I did. And um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I enjoyed the whole process of it. It was more that you'd understood that there was a topic that wasn't really covered and you thought, well, I want to write about it. I mean, obviously I love film, but maybe I, I never thought, I didn't know whether I could do it or not. There was just something I was interested in and I was very compelled to tell a story. This was just the best way of telling a story and it happened accidental, if you like, yeah. So this is your film, Adira. Mm -hmm. um, am I pronouncing that correctly? Perfectly. You're, you're very, very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> How did you sort of go about writing it? Did you have to do a lot of research? I read anything I could find from a variety of sources. You know, it's from uh, websites such as uh, unseen.org to UNICEF to watching programs and documentaries, and uh, you know, which were quite disturbing. Just reading a lot of case studies, I came up with with a story that is a very, very realistic representation of what's going on. And I hope that it's going to shed a light on an issue that maybe hasn't been talked about. Is that something you're interested in doing with your films, talking about topics that aren't really covered that much? Film is such a, such a great tool to tell stories or, uh, you know, shed light on subjects that haven't been spoken about. So yeah. obviously that does interest me. At the same time, film is in different functions. Sometimes it's there to entertain sometimes to educate you about mm -hmm. something, and sometimes it's just about a, a, a shift in thinking. I tend to be drawn to heavier subjects, maybe yeah. subjects that, I'm you know. I'm exactly the I, same. But you know what, I would, I would love to do something lighter. I just, I just don't know if it's within me. No, I'm know. the same, because yeah. I write a bit as well, and I just always find myself writing about quite dark, morbid topics, but I really get into that more. I think that actually being very good in, uh, you know, writing something comedic is probably very intense and, and very yeah, difficult to talent. do. How long was the process in like writing? I imagine, like you said, you did a lot of research. I spent quite quite a lot of time uh, in prep, generally. Once I've done the research, uh, I think writing itself was quite quick. It's a six minute piece. Yeah, I've seen it. But in a way, it's even harder because you need to make sure you kind of tell the story and just mm -hmm. have one plot and make sure you don't, you know, overwrite and try to keep it contained and, and uh, send the message across. So that was quite quick. The filming was uh, quite quick. When I watched it, I thought it was so compelling that there was barely any sound and that particularly mm -hmm. the lead didn't speak at all. And obviously, mm -hmm. you're talking about modern day slavery and their voices have been taken away from them. So oh, interesting. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, inter interesting. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. So why did you then uh, decide not to have her speak or to use sound so little? Silence has sound. Which, yeah. You know, you can't just be muted. Mm -hmm. Everything has. This is if if we were all quiet here. There is sound there. Totally. You know, sound is used and it's very essential actually to the story precisely because there is no or almost no dialogue. What I find fascinating in film is that it's an art of showing, not telling. And uh, when I was writing this, I, I, I really wanted to do something where I can tell the story and I don't need to have people speak because I'm fascinated by, by, by somebody being able to do that. You know, a lot of dialogue can be redundant. I think it's only important if it takes us further in a, in a story uh, or, or it tells us something about the mm -hmm. character. It's the same as well with uh, performances. You know, when you look at Marlon Brando perform, uh, let's say you see him uh, on the waterfront, so beautiful, and you can actually, he, he emotes, you it's know, a talent. It just, it's you a know, real talent. so yeah, 
Definitely cut the dialogue. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, that. So how did you end up getting your first short in the Curzon? Because that's a big achievement. Well, I have no credit for that. That's basically... <laughs> well, you really do, because truly... it's your film. Well, it's, I think it's our wonderful executive producer, Nia Burke, who also composed. It's, it's not on me. Do you associate yourself as a producer, writer, director? Directing is the one that, I, uh, that I'm really focusing on and I enjoy. Why did you sort of not go into the acting route, do you think? Um, I haven't really pondered about it, but if I had to say, I think uh, probably auditioning is not very pleasant, I would say. <laughs> Rejection uh, no. is terrible. Um, Crying into my eyes. <laughs> I like to have creative control and, and mm. you know, and I usually know what I want to do, so I enjoyed that, you know? Both of your films have female leads. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're quite interested in, championing women and giving them strong roles? Absolutely, I love um, you know employing women. Also, not just in the sense of roles. At the moment, I'm working with a wonderful editor, Guy Baretti. When you mention the roles as an observer, I can say it's true that the female experience is really only represented as a mother, daughter, you know, supporting mm -hmm. wife, housewife, and mm -hmm. it really doesn't go beyond that. So. You don't have a lot of roles for women, let alone interesting ones. Do you think, though, it's harder for women in the industry to climb? I think that there has been resistance to that, I think, that we have heard from, you know, every, every walk of life. So I don't think it's necessarily unique to the film industry.